Good morning, everybody. This is our last read aloud for this unit, and then um, next week we'll be moving on to a, another one. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. Here's the note catcher that you need, front and back. Okay, and before we start, I want you to talk to your family about what is a soldier. We've got some in the picture. What is a soldier? your family about it. Okay. So sometimes long ago, people in one state or country had a big fight or war with people from another state or country. Okay. Um, and the people who were in the war were called soldiers. Okay. And remember we learned that 300 years ago in colonial times, the most common way to get from place to place was walking. Because remember, this was before there were planes or trains or cars or anything. So during wars, it was common to have soldiers wandering around in small groups. Maybe they were walking home after a long war. Maybe they got separated from the rest of the army. Um, but a lot of times they might be without any food or supplies, and they had to get food from the townspeople. Okay? So today you're going to hear a story about some soldiers from long ago who came to a town and they were looking for food. Okay? Um, do you think that if you lived during colonial times and some soldiers knocked on your door and asked for food, would you give them some? Talk to your family about that. Okay, and listen carefully to find out whether the tradespeople wanted to feed the soldiers at first and what made them change their mind. Okay. All right, this is called Stove Poop. Three soldiers. Henry, George, and Lucas were marching home from war. They had been marching for many days, and they expected to march many more before they finally made it home. They were cold and tired, but most of all, they were hungry. Just look over those trees, Henry said, pointing. I see a church steeple. All right, let's see. Right here, you can see a church steeple, like the top of the church, like the tower. There must be a town over there. Perhaps the good people will offer us some food. Good idea, said George. Let's go. All right, let me get it a little bit closer so you can see where they're looking. See the town right here? That's where they're headed to go ask for some food. Okay, so the three soldiers marched toward town, holding their stomachs and hanging their heads because they were so hungry. They didn't know it, but a little girl saw them coming. She turned and ran to the blacksmith's shop. She banged on the door. What did the blacksmith do? Do you remember? Talk to your family. What does a blacksmith do? I hope you remember. Blacksmith, blacksmith, she said. Three soldiers are coming and they look hungry. We must offer them food. The blacksmith didn't turn his head. He continued pounding on the big iron pot that he was making. I have no time to be offering food to hungry soldiers. I must get this pot finished or I will not get paid. And if I do not get paid, I cannot buy food, and my family will be even hungrier than those soldiers. If you say so, said the girl. Then she ran to the carpenter's shop and banged on that door. What does a carpenter do? Try to remember. What does a carpenter do? Carpenter, carpenter, she said. Three soldiers are coming, and they look hungry. We must offer them food. The carpenter turned his head. He continued staring at the level he had just placed on top of a table. A level is a tool that's used to measure something to make sure that it's even. Hungry soldiers, he said without much sympathy. That means he doesn't feel sorry for them. I have no time to be offering food to three hungry soldiers. I must get this table done or I will not get paid. And then I will not have enough food to feed my family. If you say so, said the girl. Then she turned and banged on the baker's door. What does the baker do? What is the baker's job? Okay, hopefully you remember, and then we can pause for a second. It says, um, oh, it says, why won't the carpenter help the soldiers? I know we were just talking about the baker, but um, think back just a little bit. Why did the carpenter say, I don't have time for that? Because what? He had to do what? Hopefully you remember, otherwise you could rewind a little bit. Okay. 
and pause that video if you need to. Baker, Baker, the little girl said. Three soldiers are coming. They look hungry. We must offer them food. The baker didn't turn his head. He continued pulling fresh loaves of bread out of the oven. <sighs> he said, I suppose you think I'm going to give those three soldiers some of my fresh bread. I will sell it to them, but I will not give it away for nothing. I must eat too, you know. All right, so, so far there's only one person in town who wants to make sure that the soldiers get fed and get some food. Who's the only person who's trying to feed the soldiers right now? Tell your family. The girl went from shop to shop to shop. She asked everyone in town if they could feed three hungry soldiers, but they were all too busy doing their own jobs to offer any help. They told the girl that they did not have enough to feed their own families, let alone three soldiers. Okay, so why are all these other tradespeople saying, no, 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 we can't help, we can't give them any food? Finally, Henry, George, and Lucas stumbled into the town square. They were colder, more tired, and hungrier than ever. They looked around. Nobody had come to see them. Hello, said the girl who had been watching the soldiers from across the town square. The three soldiers turned. Aha, said Lucas. Are you a welcoming committee? So Lucas is making a joke because the committee is like a big group of people, but she's just one little girl all alone. And the soldiers were hoping that more than one person would come and help them, but it's really just her. I'm sorry, said the girl. Everyone, town, everyone in town is very busy right now with their own work. They cannot feed you. Well then, said Lucas, we shall have to feed ourselves. He reached down to the ground and picked up a large stone near his feet. We shall make stone soup. We make it all the time where I come from. Stone soup? asked the girl. But you can't make soup from nothing but stones. Of course you can, said Lucas. Stone soup is the best soup in the world. And the best part is that all we need to make it are three large stones and a large pot of water. Okay, so what do you think would happen if they put um, stones in a hot pot of water? Do you think it would make soup? Yes or no? And what do you think it would taste like? Do you think that the stones would have any flavor and make it taste good? Here's a stone, said George, and here's another, said Henry. Perfect, said Lucas. Then if we could just find a large iron pot, we could make the soup ourselves and we wouldn't bother anyone. I know where we can get a pot, said the girl. She ran to the blacksmith's shop, but she didn't even have to knock. The blacksmith had been listening through the door. Okay, before we see what the blacksmith says, let's go to our next question. It says, what would happen if they put stones in a pot of water? What would it taste like? I just asked you that, so hopefully you remember your answer. Make sure you're starting with an uppercase letter. Make sure you end with a period. I noticed you're all writing a lot neater lately. It's great. Okay, pause the video if you need to. Okay, let's see what the blacksmith says. <clears throat> I'm curious about this stone soup, said the blacksmith. blacksmith. I'll lend you a pot. He and the girl carried it out to the town square. Okay, so before the blacksmith said, no, no, I can't help you, I can't help you. Well, why do you think he's deciding to help them now? Like he changed his mind. Talk to your family about that. Excellent, said Lucas. Now we just need to fill this pot with water and we'll start our stone soup cooking. We won't have to bother anyone else. Several people popped out of their houses and shops carrying buckets of water. They dumped the water into the pot. The carpenter popped out of his shop. Do you need some firewood, he asked. He carried an armload of wood to the square and began building a fire. George, Henry, and the girl each dropped a stone into the pot. Everyone stood watching Lucas as he stirred the soup. Okay, so two questions. One, who gave them the iron pot? Who gave the soldiers the iron pot? Okay, hopefully you said it. And then who gave them wood for the fire?
Mmm, said Lucas. It already smells so delicious, and we really don't need anything else. Okay, so do you, how do you think the soup is tasting so far? So far, it sounds like they got an iron pot with water in it and some stones. How do you think it tastes so far or smells? He says, we don't really need anything else, but... But what? asked the girl. This stone soup looks a tad thin, said Lucas. Stone soup is best when it has a bit of barley and some meat in it. I have some barley, said the baker, popping out of his shop. He brought a bowl full of barley and tossed it into the soup. I have a side of beef, beef that I just chopped up, said the butcher. He came out with a plate piled high with cubes of beef and dropped it into the pot. Ah, said Lucas, stirring and sniffing. The soup looks much better now, but oh dear. What? asked the townspeople. This stone soup would be even better with a little onion and a bit of salt. The grocer, the grocer is like the storekeeper who sells food. The grocer brought onions and salt. Other townspeople turned up carrying a few items from their homes, potatoes, turnips, carrots, and celery, and all of these were chopped up and tossed in the pot. Okay, so do you think that the soup would taste good now? What are they putting in it? Excellent, said Lucas. He stirred, sniffed, and then took a little taste. He stood up straight, and all the townspeople watched and waited. And finally, Lucas said, it's perfect. The townspeople sighed with pleasure. <sighs> Except, said Lucas, I forgot one very important thing. What, what, what? The townspeople asked. Stone soup is best when it's shared. Okay, so he's going to share it with everybody, all the townspeople. All right, but we got a few questions to answer before I keep going. One is, what ingredients did they put in the stone soup? What are some of the ingredients that they put in the stone soup? Okay, answer that question. And then you can answer number three. It says, why did the townspeople start bringing food to the soldiers when they wouldn't before? So you could say, they are bringing the food because... Okay, pause it if you need to. Okay, so Lucas just said stone soup is best when it's shared. That means they're going to share it with everybody. And all the townspeople cheered. They brought out tables and chairs, and they brought out bowls and cups and spoons. They brought out fresh apple cider, loaves of crusty bread, and fig pies. And they talked and laughed with the soldiers and ate and ate and ate. They ate every last bit of stone soup, all except the three stones, which sat at the bottom of the pot. Thank you for teaching us to make stone soup, said the girl. She peered or looked or stared into the pot. But the stones are still there. Why didn't they get cooked into the soup? That's odd, said Lucas. He winked at the girl and whispered, perhaps you were right in the first place. Perhaps you can't make soup from stones after all. Okay, so was the girl right after all? <clears throat> and who ate all this soup? Who ate all of the soup? With their stomachs full and their spirits or their moods raised, the three soldiers waved goodbye to the little girl and the townspeople and they continued on their long march home. The end. Okay, so I hope you liked that story. I know you got one more question to answer. It says, why were the stones left in the pot? Okay, so the people ate, 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 ate up all the soup, but at the end, all the stones were still left at the bottom of the pot. Why? So you could say, the stones were left because... Okay, pause the video for a second if you need to, and then I have a few more questions for you to just talk about with your family. Okay, one is, do you think this could really happen, or is it make-believe? And how do you know? That's your journal question for today. Do you think this story would actually happen or do you think it's make-believe? And when did this story take place? Was this, Did this happen a long time ago or did it just happen like lately? Okay. And last thing for you to think about, well, a few more things. Um, do you think the townspeople knew that the stones and water alone would not make any soup? Do you think the soldiers knew that it wasn't going to make any soup? 
And then how about the girl? Did she know that just some stones and water were not going to make any soup? And how did the little girl figure it out at the end? All right, I know that was a lot of questions, but I hope you got those. Um, parents, thank you for sitting with your kids and listening to these read-alouds with us. I know um, your job is hard over there lately, but thank you, everybody, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.